Jesus. They don't really have that much of a music scene. That was the, there, so. we, we were in Modesto, that was the toothler, toothless biker bitches guy. Remember that? Oh, jeez. <laughs> there was this yeah, guy yeah. that came up to us and he said, he came up to us in between sets and he was like, man, if you guys come here during the motorcycle rally and play those kind of songs, you're going to have toothless biker bitches lining up to suck <laughs> you out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh right. man, that's the end John, yeah, that's the end greatest end. compliment ever. <laughs> no, uh, welcome back to Badass Fans Live. We're here with the Deltas today. Thank you guys Happy for to be being here. here. Stoked yeah. to finally get you in. Um, let's uh, break the ice a little and go to the wheel. All you guys right, ready to okay. Just take a turn. Sure. Who's right. going first? I guess I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to spin. You tell me when to stop. Ready? All right. Stop. Ooh, hobbies. Hobbies. Other hobbies. What are some of my hobbies? Um, I like to uh, fence. You know fencing? Yeah. Uh, with swords. Um, John was I'm nationally a ranked. I'm a really? Saber. Nationally ranked? I was at one point. Wow. And um, some other hobbies. Uh, I like to hike. I like hiking. Uh, <laughs> This is not that exciting, but you know, um, <laughs> That's cool. hiking, fencing, and uh, fencing is yeah. cool. You don't meet people who fence every day. Yeah, no, it's it's a great sport. It's just uh, it's hard to find other people to fence who are, do do it too. So. Yeah, but uh, yeah, nice. that's my hobbies. Rad. All right, Ted, you ready? Yeah, let's All do right. it. All right, stop. What is this? Oh, do a magic trick. Oh man, uh, <laughs> one of these, you know. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, how did I do that? Um, I can't remember what band added that one. And by the way, you guys get to add one at the end. Oh, You're nice. going to tell me what you oh, want to okay. add to the wheel. So some of them, oh. yeah, like do a magic trick. I think we had like favorite moment from falling down was added on here. Okay. There's some random ones, and most of the time they're from other bands. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. We yeah. actually did one. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well it's done. the only trick I know. You didn't you know? just freeze up. You like were ready to go. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying not to freeze up. <laughs> All right. Let's get down to some real music questions here. So when and why did each of you start playing music? Well, I started first. I started when I was uh, eight or something. I think it was eight. And I started playing drums. Uh, because basically I didn't want to sing in the band or sing in like the vocal music concert or you know what it is um, and soon after I, I started first like maybe a year or two and then Ted Ted started soon after yeah yeah we uh, my uh, my mom took me to a music store to get John drumsticks um, and uh, I saw some I saw the gu electric guitars up on the wall and I was just like okay I'm in yeah, that nice. was, that was uh, yeah. but we had, um, our parents were really cool and they, uh, they played us a lot of really good music when we were kids and uh, so we just, we got exposed to a lot of really good stuff that kind of like got us excited about it. And so who were you listening interested. to growing up? Who were they playing for you guys? It was a lot of music from, I mean they're a baby boomer generation, Yeah. Um, so a lot of it was from the 60s, 70s. I remember the first album we listened to was um, Electric Ladyland. That was like the yes. first rock album. <laughs> that and Led Zeppelin one, yeah. Zeppelin yeah. one. Uh, what else was there? Um, can you think of what it was? Yeah, remember? I can actually remember when we were on when we were on the way to that music store. We were listening to Electric Lady Land. Oh yeah, wow. Band. Tommy. I didn't Tommy. like Tommy at first, but now I, I really I love the Tommy. Who? The who? Yeah. yeah. Um, but lots of like '60s rock. rock bands and blues and um, a little bit of country, but I don't think we were yeah. as responsive to it back then. Um, Emmy Lou Harris and stuff. Yeah, our dad loves Emmy Lou Harris. Um, but yeah, no, it was lots of, you know, lots of really good music. We're really lucky. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, somebody asked us the other night, we were playing uh, for a group of people, and they said, because we do lots of cover music too, and they said, how do you know all these old songs? And I said, uh, good parenting. <laughs> you know? and I was like, That's uh, a great answer. It was the, um, yeah. you know, yeah. We had know. a good teacher too. We had to get a good music, music teacher, yeah, John did. Yeah. yeah. Well, we he sort of both did, yeah. He always taught us that, that we should look at the who, if we find a band that we like or an artist that we like, look who they got their influences from and then, you know, listen from that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, like, that, you know, you listen to 60s rock, it, like, really quickly takes you to blues, you yeah. know. 
So it's just like, um, so it was, it was, that was a really good piece of advice because it turned us on to this whole other side of music that we would have never listened to with our parents, you know. It's always kind of funny to talk. Well, our parents grew up in Chicago, so they like, they were literally like a couple miles away from in the 60s being able to go see like Muddy Waters oh, and people man. like that. Yeah. But the first time they heard the blues was when <laughs> English musicians came here and came to Chicago and played yeah. it. Because there was odd. like this gap, you know, where you didn't, where you, you know, at that, during that era of time, if you lived in one neighborhood, you might not get to hear that music or be exposed to it. Yeah. So it was just, it's kind of funny to think about, but um, yeah, I mean, it, we, we always talk about um, how exciting that period of time was in our lives when we got to get yeah. exposed I to mean, all that great music. I mean, it basically formed our whole, what we do in our whole life now, you know, yeah. Yeah. that little period of time. And have you guys always played together? Have you played in other bands as well? We almost always try and like go as a unit. Yeah. Even when we play as um, as sidemen in other bands, which we have done a fair amount of, um, you know, where we'll get um, hired to play. You know, we played in uh, some like an R&B band behind a singer and, um, you know, various different groups. And we always try and, if they hire one of us, we always try and go as a set. Yeah. Because we're just, better as a pair you know yeah we know how to work with each other really well and yeah we've always ever since bunk beds you know we've played together <laughs> yeah we're lucky you know? yeah. we're lucky that we have we have, so. we have each other you know and you guys get along well so that helps yeah, at least. yeah, yeah, yeah there, we, we have our moments you know yeah <laughs> um you know it's a it's it's an interesting thing to be uh to play music with your brother it's kind of like this unique sort of um, thing we talk about other we talk to other brother bands like the Zemed Brothers you mm -hmm. know we get a, a kick out of like sitting and talking with them about you know interacting with your brother in music you yeah. know because it's like this really unique kind of uh, funny kind of thing and it, it's it's cool to, to uh, um, be able to talk about that with with other sets yeah. of brothers you know but um, yeah no we uh, it's great, yeah. We're we. I mean, we're really lucky that we that we have each other to play with, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so. Nice. All right. So why the name the Deltas? Uh, when we were um, like right after I got out, of, or right before I graduated from high school, we took a trip down to the Mississippi Delta to like learn more about blues. Yeah, Clarksdale, like, oh, cool. Mississippi. Yeah. And. Um, we went to Clarksdale, and we still go there on almost every national tour we go there. Nice. And, um, and we were just like so impressed with the music there. Because um, it's, it's one of the few places where it's like, there's a blues club there called Ground Zero, which is like the most fitting name ever for that area. Because yeah. it really is like where that music originated, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like... Um, you can just feel it there. It's so intense, you know, like um, just the history and and the way that that music came about. You 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 understand it in this whole new kind of profound way. So I mean, when we were teenagers, we we yeah we decided to take the name the Deltas, which was you know a couple of years ago. Yeah, so we, we, remember, we went down there recently and uh, we got to play there. Yeah, for the first time, which is we were always too intimidated to play there because. You know, it's like super authentic blues, yeah. and you know, if I was down there going to see some blues, I wouldn't want to see some guys from California. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't. I mean, we we backed up another uh, blues artist named Watermelon Slim. Watermelon Slim. Yeah, yes. you can check him out. He's a great yeah. harmonica yeah, he player. Let us yeah, be, he let us be his band for the night. Yeah. And uh, remember, when, remember when we showed up at Rad's? Yeah. But and we, Rad, Rad was outside. He was like, "Oh, yeah, we got just, this band from California." Called the Deltas. Yeah, they yeah like they thought, in the Delta. Like. They really thought. Yeah, they really got a good laugh out of out of our name. You know, <laughs> they were like, I mean, it's really really cool place. Reds. It's like the one of the last remaining like really authentic juke joints. I mean, it's like cardboard floors and like wow. the whole like yeah, just a super funky place yeah. and uh, just really a trip. But yeah, they were 
Before we played, they definitely were really, really skeptical of our <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah, but once we played, it was, it was they fine. Were cool. They were good. They liked us. Yeah. Yeah. We can play. I mean, we can play blues. That's what we started with. Yeah. We can just play blues. All night. Yeah. yeah. That's our fa probably one of it's our, our favorites. That's kind of, yeah, it's our first thing. First love is blues. Yeah. So that was a really, 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 really cool experience. And we, we always have, like, this connection to that place. It's sort of like our, you know, if we if music was our religion, that would be, like, our... Holy Land, Mecca. you know, or <laughs> something. <laughs> it's Clarksdale, Mississippi, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool place. We always are trying to talk people into going and checking it out, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, speaking of touring, you're one of the few bands I know that can the tours often and yeah. does it successfully. So, are you guys booking those yourselves? Like, how does that work? And where are like your favorite spots to hit? Um, well, we've done like a uh, we've done a mixture. Um, we've had people that have helped us book them, and we book them ourselves. Some parts of them, there's kind of a lot of different elements that add up to them being booked. But we just sort of like um, we tried like a couple of small tours, and we just realized that it was doable. You know that we could. Um, I think we play a different kind of music than a lot of, um, I think in, in LA it's not as common yeah, for absolutely. bands to tour because they're playing a kind of music that, they're, they're trying to play all original music and it's music that only works in like really urban areas. Mm -hmm. You know, so we can kind of like, we can kind of chameleon, you know, like we can play yeah. country really well and we can play blues really well. So we can just pretty, kind of yeah. like, we can, you know, we can pretty much go anywhere in the country. There, there was, I remember play. you were nervous. Uh, yeah. we, we were playing in, uh, we were in New York, yeah. and we were playing in Well, before, Harlem. Well, before, you got to preface it with. Oh, yeah, before we were playing in a barn in Virginia. Oh, wow. Like, it was, it was like a huge barn. It was a brewery, and it was just like, we were just playing pretty much straight ahead country. Yeah. Um, and we had been for many nights before yeah. that. We had been in, like, a region of the South where we felt like it was really... I mean, we're fine with it. We love to play country, so we were like doing more country, and and our set will sort of morph over the course of a tour, depending on what region we're in. Yeah. And so we went from being there in that barn to all of a sudden being in Harlem the next wow. night playing. It shows you how close they are. Yeah. And the it just it's amazing yeah. how on the East Coast everything going is from so Virginia close. to yeah. to uh, yeah to to Harlem. So it was like over you know in one night we had to completely like rethink our set. And play totally differently because we just you know the country stuff we'd been playing was not going to yeah. work in Harlem. So you were really nervous. I remember that. <laughs> I, was like, I was a little worried. <laughs> really yeah. funny. But it went over really great actually, and we uh, we played a different kind of set than we had been playing the last couple weeks, and and uh, we opened for this Afrobeat band um, oh, wow. that was amazing, yeah, was. and we danced like, all like night. Kind of style yeah, yeah it, was, it was amazing. Yeah, we had yeah. such a First good time. First time seeing that. It was we have amazing. some. We, I mean, the one thing you can say about touring is it's it's the way that we tour. It's not particularly glamorous. You know, we have shows that are that just totally suck, and we have shows that are really great. Um, but it's always this massive adventure. Yeah. You know, where we never really know what to expect, and a lot of the places we've never been before. Uh, it's getting to the point now where we can. Uh, we can tour especially in the in the Southwest in all places that we've been many times now. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you were asking like some of our favorite places, uh, like North Texas is really great. We Amarillo. just have mm -hmm. um, some of our like coolest fans. That was one of the there. first places we played in Amarillo when we were on really? tour. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and we have like just, just call them up some, it's really, it really gig. comes down to, I mean, it's always fun to be a tourist and go to cool places, but I feel like even more importantly, what's a determining factor of places that we like on tour is places where the people are cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. where people are nice and they're good listeners and they, um, you know, they just, they like what we do. It's like we just click, you know. Yeah. And North North Texas, I think, is especially one of those yeah. spots. Uh, Flagstaff. We have a great time at Flagstaff. Yeah, we're, that's, we're going back to Flagstaff in January. Nice. Um, I mean, uh, Colorado. Colorado, Colorado. Yeah, Colorado. <laughs> Colorado, especially the Rockies. Especially our bass player loves Colorado. Yeah, yeah. Colorado. Yeah, those new laws. Uh, <laughs> really, yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, we're all moving a little slower through Colorado. You know? It's like it's just you gotta kind of chilling. Um, and you go to Utah, or just <laughs> oh, Utah yeah. is totally different. Contrast. I love yeah. Utah. I love no, Utah. We, we love Utah. Yeah. Um, 
some of our like coolest fans are in Utah. Oh yeah, some yeah. really nice people. Uh, Helper, Utah. In Helper, great, yeah, very mining, small town, but yeah, mining some, town. Yeah, Helper, Utah. If you're watching, <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. What well, I mean, nice. that's that's touring. Yeah, it's, it's, we've been a lot of places. Yeah, yeah la I mean, great. last tour we were out for three months and we played yeah, that was 60, like a 60 shows in a little wow. under three months. Yeah, you have to play a lot too to make you it do. financially worth it. Yeah, you have to be playing like four, three or four days a week at least. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So it's a lot yeah. of lot of playing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, there's another question, which I'm sure since you guys had watched some of the interviews before, I always ask all bands. Um, and it's if you could change one thing about the music industry right now, what would it be? Okay. Um, Ted, you have yeah. You were, you were thinking, we were I talking mean, about this. Uh, I think, like, I mean, I think the biggest thing, and, you know, is just we've lost the income stream as musicians being able to collect money from mechanical royalties, from selling records, mm -hmm. you know, and they haven't been able to figure out a way. To, to, to make that a viable income stream again for musicians. Like, I mean, there's lots of things like Spotify and Tidal and all those kind of things. Um, Apple Music. There's more access to music than there's ever been. Mm -hmm. But musicians are being paid for that in the, in the lowest, in the, you know, in the littlest they've ever been paid. Right. So, I mean, I think that's the big thing that, that needs to change. And I think it will change over time. You know, it's just going to take... Uh, somebody really clever and really that has a real vision um you know for the future of the music industry to to, to change that you know um but i mean we live in a really cool time i mean as consumer listeners and as musicians we have more control over our future than we ever have yeah. have have had and uh and we also as a listener we have like we can listen to anything anytime we want you know, I mean, yeah. that's crazy. I mean, Quality's not you showed somebody greatest, an but, you, know. you showed somebody an iPhone in the '60s, and we're like, I have, you know, all these records on here, and I can and I can get any record I want. Yeah, they. I mean, that would have blown someone's mind. Absolutely. You know? So I mean, there, there's good things and bad things, but yeah, I think that. I mean, that if I could change anything, I think that would be what it would be. I know it's kind of a big. Yeah, well, that's a, yeah. Well, I agree. A great answer. Yeah. yeah. All right, last question. So, what do you guys have coming up in 2016? Uh, what do we got coming up? 2016. Well, we're going to be releasing a new record. Yeah, a new record. Um, we released a limited edition EP that we had on the road because we were just like, we've been working on these songs for like almost two years now, and people were getting kind of restless on yeah. the road you know we were we got to the point where we were playing like almost full sets of material that we didn't have for sale yeah. on a CD so we st we released like a limited edition EP that we just had on the road and we sold out of all of those awesome and yeah. um, so now in march the first week of march we're going to expand that EP into a full record right. mm -hmm. so that's going to be and, and yeah. the, all the songs that we played uh, just you know a couple, to, an hour ago um, those are all new songs that are going to be uh, on the new album. And I think we're going to release uh, some of them as singles, right? Yeah, in January. Yeah, um, yeah or <laughs> this will probably be in January, but it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll probably, we're going to release one of those, one of the songs that we did on Badass Band's blog, we're going to release as a single. Cool. Um, yeah. We're still sort of deciding which one it's going to be, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna go on a short little tour with the Zmed Brothers, which we're really excited about. Yeah. Yeah. Dual uh, Brothers. Yes, Dual, brother. Dual Brother Tour. It. Yeah, it's, it's it's really cool to play, super group. to play with them. <laughs> yeah, because we we can kind of put on this whole like variety show. Like they play a set, then we play a set, and then we get together and play like a big set together. Love it. You know, so it's yeah. like a it's like a whole little show in itself. Um, but we're gonna take that to Arizona to to try it out and see yeah. what it would be like, and then. Um, and then at the end of March, we're going to probably go on a, on a, like a three-week probably national three tour, and then the summer we'll probably head yeah. out for a couple of months. Cool. Again, you know, mm -hmm. so that's sort of a, yeah. Hopefully, we'll be we'll be seeing everybody all over, you know. Yeah.